Hey Kevin here with another Flip a Dork Flips and Finds video where I show you different items to pick up really cheap thrifting and garage selling. I do a lot of garage selling right now. And then I sell them online either on eBay or locally, mostly on Facebook Marketplace, but also sometimes on Craigslist. Facebook Marketplace is just doing way better these days. But anyway, it's pretty fun. So let me show you my uh, first sale of the week. It's this right here, sold on eBay. It's an old VHS tape. Now, I showed this a while back. I can't remember now. I know I paid 50 cents, but I don't remember if it was from a garage sale or Salvation Army. I'm, I'm kind of thinking it was from this garage sale, this guy that had really cool vintage stuff. I don't 100% remember right now. But uh, anyway, uh, the movie is called Trick or Treats, and it's from 1982 from Vestron Video is the uh, distribution company. And uh, one thing about this that kind of hurt it a little bit, it's the reason it didn't go for as much as I thought, is I think because it's a rental video. So, you know, it has all the rental stickers on there. They even spelled it wrong, trick or treat. They forgot the S. Um, but, you know, on a legit tape or whatever, it would have a little sticker right there. But uh, it was still sought after enough and worth enough money that I decided to go ahead and buy it. And uh, when I looked it up, there actually was one that sold. And uh, it was uh, auction. It went auction style, and it sold for forty-five or maybe even more. It might have been forty-nine dollars. It was forty-something dollars. I thought, wow, that's awesome. You know, this thing's only fifty cents. Uh, you know, that's really good money. So then I come home and I realize, oh wait, it's a rental. Okay, well, maybe it's going to hurt value a little bit. I don't know. So I tried to go a little under. So I had it at, I think I had it for a long time at like forty-four ninety-five or best offer plus shipping. Okay, well then I added free shipping. Nothing happened, of course. I had watchers, all kinds of watchers actually. I think up to like 12 or 13 watchers. I guess that price was just too high. I dropped it down to 40 and you know, free shipping, best offer. Then eventually I was just like, and I had a couple offers at about $35 but I passed on them. Well, that was months ago. So now I'm just sitting here, I'm going, okay, I need to just get rid of the thing. I've had a long time, whatever someone will offer me is pretty good, I'll go ahead and take it. So I put it down to $34.95 free shipping or best offer. My best offer is down to $30 and someone gave me an offer. So I decided to go ahead and just take it and be done. I should have taken it $35 a couple months ago, but I thought it was gonna go for a lot more. So anyway, sold for 30, I paid 50 cents. I'll pay shipping. Um, it's 11 ounces, so it's gonna be mm, three or four something to ship out, probably right around four. And then I'll pay some eBay and PayPal fees. So I'll make 20, low 20s on it. So it's still pretty good. It's not quite as good as I thought, though. Not too bad. So anyway, I need to get that packed up and shipped out today. And of course, if any other sales happen, I'll make sure to show them in this video. All right, so someone is finally interested in the table and chairs I picked up the other day. And it ended up being a really bad purchase. And I am taking a pretty bad deal on it just to get rid of it. So I paid, what was it, $35, which seemed like a good deal. They're nice and solid, except for the top is laminate. But the chairs are all in good condition. It's just the style that was the major deal killer. People will buy the farmhouse style tables or ones that are a little more modern looking. But one kind of like this with the, you know, the frilly loop-de-doos on the bottom of the table and like that cut on the back of the chairs was just not popular at all. When my wife saw it, she said, that's a grandma table and chairs. But I don't know. To me, it looked like solid wood chairs that would probably sell. But eh, not really. So anyway, a lady called me off of Craigslist and offered me 50 bucks on it. So I will make a whole $15. But I'm looking at it as making, uh, getting paid $15 to learn what works and what doesn't. So I know not to buy this style anymore. No one really wants it right now. All right, so speaking of not so good purchases for local flips, this dresser is another one. It's finally going today. I've had it a while. It sure has the look and the style, but it needed just enough work and it was already painted that it really turned off a lot of potential buyers. Also, when I picked it up, the drawers didn't want to open and now they open really nice and smooth. So I actually took my listing down and then raised the price back up. So when I first bought this at the garage sale, I paid $25 for it. The guy said it was in his basement and he thought moisture got to it and ruined it. And uh, anyway, I let it sit for a couple weeks because no one wanted to buy it and now they open great. So I tried to ask him 50 bucks. Someone offered me 30, I counted it at 40 and they're gonna take it and she's here right now. So anyway, I will be making what, 15 bucks on it. So it's another one of those deals where I make $15 to learn what sells and what doesn't. So anyway, I need to go take it outside for her right now. Okay, so the lady came by and bought that dresser for $40. And like I said, I paid 25, so I only made $15. That was a really bad, 
I guess it was a bad purchase. The sale was all right. It was kind of a bad purchase and a bad sale. But like I said, I'm looking at it as making $15 to learn what works and what doesn't. So it's pretty obvious to me that a mid-century dresser that needs work and is already painted and then it's got to be redone is a really bad buy. I won't buy any more like that. If it was still in original condition, even if it was scratched or had you know chips and marks on it and things like that, it would have sold a long time ago, I think. But because it was like a weird combo of like it kind of looked finished and then originally the drawers didn't work quite right and it was like pre-painted, missing parts of the legs and all that. It was just a weird combo that scared a lot of people off. So anyway, I'm getting better about that too. So uh, I probably won't buy anything else like that. Also, the lady said she's buying it for her kid's room. She thought it looked kind of like an old toolbox and they're doing her uh, kid's room in a tractor theme, like a t tractor garage. So I thought that was kind of cool. They're going to take the legs off anyway, so don't tip over. Okay, I also had a eBay sale, which was pretty good. It went a little less than I thought, but it's still pretty, a pretty good um, sale. So this right here, I almost dropped it. Radica Triple Play Poker. Pretty good size here. Nice size buttons. The uh, Solitaire games about this size from Radica do a lot better, but this was not too bad. I got it at a garage sale for $0.50. Cents. I thought it was going to sell for around $30.00. And it uh, didn't quite happen. I think I was trying to ask like maybe $27 or $28.95 plus shipping. I was trying to like get just over $30. It didn't happen, so I dropped the price down. I eventually got it down to $25 with free shipping. I didn't have a best offer on this one. And uh, it finally sold. So that was pretty good. So I turned $0.50 cents into $25. I'll pay shipping. Um, what is it? Six ounces. It's not that heavy. It'll probably be right around $3 to ship. And then uh, I'll pay some fees and all that. So I'll probably make right around $20, maybe just a little under $20. So that's not too bad. So anyway, I need to get a label for that and then sent off to the post office. Well, I just got back from the post office. So when I left there, I went uh, and did some thrifting and I found a dresser. I'll show you in a minute. But of course, I saw something else that I need to take to the post office. I have about 18 minutes to get it over there and I probably should because tomorrow's the fourth and it'd be a holiday So if I can get out today, at least it'll get a little you know get to them a little quicker But it's this n64 cartridge case that holds 16 or uh, sorry six games has a couple pockets It's in good conditions dated 1997 and uh, anyway, I got this at a really nice garage sale the lady said uh, uh, that she was talking to another lady at the sale who was a shopping and the lady shopping was like yeah We just had a garage sale like two weeks ago and between me and my sister we made $31 and the lady's like well to be honest I've done like $700 today and you could see the the lady shopping she just kind of dropped she's like ah oh. but anyway I got this there for 25 cents she said the most expensive thing she sold at her garage sale was only $15 so she must have been making sales all day long that's a lot of money for garage sale okay anyway 25 cents I had it for $25 or free shipping I actually had it down to 20 $4.95 of free shipping, but the other day eBay was having a sale where anything over $25 you got 15% off, so I bumped up anything close to $25 up to $25. And especially this, if they would have bought it then, they could have saved a good amount of money. They would have got it for like, what, $21, $22, something like that. But anyway, they waited till today, so it sold for $25 of free shipping. It's very lightweight. It's, uh, what is it here? Seven ounces, so. This will probably be about $2.66 to ship out. So after fees and all that kind of stuff, it'd be very similar to that video game that I just showed you, the little handheld game. I'll probably make like $19, $20, somewhere around there. So anyway, let me go ahead and print this label off, see if I can get over there. I got to get back. I'm going to, uh, there's a uh, trunk I need to sell. The lady's showing up for that. And then I will show you the dresser I picked up today. All right, here is that trunk the lady's picking up. It's in pretty good condition, just has a couple of marks on top but it's the uh, red trunk I got for, I think it was only $3 at a garage sale. It's actually the nicest one I've picked up. All the latches work, the lock even still works, which is interesting. And uh, another cool thing is the interior is in really nice shape and it has the key. So I really thought this was gonna go for way more money than it did. So I had it listed for, I think 50 or $60 and of course nothing happened, so I dropped the price, dropped the price, I had it down to like 45, 35. I finally just needed to get rid of it. I had too much stuff. And uh, we were kind of in liquidation mode, so I put it down to $25. 
and now a lady is going to come pick it up. So hopefully she shows up in the next 20, 30 minutes or so, and I'll make about $22 off of it. All right, so I bought this last night, and now someone just showed up to buy this. I listed it for $115. I bought it for $25. I'm not sure if they're going to negotiate or not, so I'll let you know after they buy it. All right, so even though it's 4th of July today, I actually had several sales. And uh, last night, I sold that red trunk. Like I said, it only went for $25. It paid three at a garage sale. I really thought it was going to go for a lot more money because it was in really good condition, but it went for $25. So I made $22 off of that. Okay, also, that nine drawer dresser I just showed you, I picked it up yesterday afternoon at Salvation Army. It was only $25 for that. That was a great deal. Sometimes their stuff is way overpriced, and other times it's way underpriced like that. So I grabbed it. It was in good condition. All the drawers worked. I had to put them back on the, the rails. They had them all off, so it looked broken at the store, but it wasn't. It was in perfect shape. Now, the uh, condition, I guess, was not that great. It had some scuffs and scrapes and marks and things like that, but it was the absolute perfect candidate for like a chalk paint job. That's what they do to those. That kind of, sort of French provincial look with the fancy swirly dudes in the legs that are all curvy. It looks really good in chalk paint. So, um, and the ugly brown people at the thrift stores are like, oh, that thing, you know, so old and outdated, but when it gets painted up, it looks pretty cool. It goes for a lot more money. And, and people that know what they're looking at know they can pay pretty good money for it. Now, it was not real wood, so I didn't know if that affected or not. So I kind of thought it would go cheap. I bought it for 25 I wanted it to disappear either last night or today, so I figured it would probably sell for about $75, maybe $85. I kind of thought that was low, but I just wanted it to go. But in order to get that, I figured I would ask higher and then have some wiggle room. I also just decided to try a different technique, so I asked a lot higher, and what I did is I listed it on Facebook for $115, and I said, if you can get it today, I will do a better deal. So that immediately tells them that I'm not expecting $115 and for them to just start shooting me offers. I uh, had one person last night asking about it and I didn't hear back. Then I wake up this morning and I had probably four or five people asking about it. One person offered me $70, which is, you know, I figured, eh, okay, that's about where it would probably go. And then that was kind of it. And then I had some other people, is it available, is it available? But then there was one lady that was serious. You could tell she was asking questions about its condition, how the drawers slid, all this. You could tell she was really thinking about it. And finally, she's like, you know what? Sold. I will be there in an hour. So about 45 minutes later, they show up. That's why I was rushing the video a while ago. They showed up before I realized it, and I wanted to show it on, on camera. But uh, anyway, I uh, took it. They you know, rang the doorbell, so I had to take it outside while they're there. I usually have things sitting out for them. And uh, she looked at it real quick. I mean, they didn't even open drawers or anything. She was in love with it as is. And uh, they immediately carried it, put it in the back of her truck. And then she pulled out $120 and said, here, keep the change. It is totally worth it. So not only did I get the full $115 that I thought was probably higher than it was really going to go for, but I made even more than that on there. So I got $120 on that. So that's a $95 profit, I think. And uh, that's pretty good. So um, that's pretty cool. And uh, I was surprised. I mean, 4th of July, I guess the morning is not as you know action-packed as afternoon and evening, but uh, that was pretty cool. Okay, also I had an eBay sale. It's this right here. This is a PS3 game, Splatterhouse. It's one of those games where it's like a bunch of monsters and you're splashing them up and blood splatters everywhere and all that. And I don't know. I tried it. I tested it out to make sure it worked, but it didn't seem like a very fun game to me. But I guess it's popular or sought after or something because it sold pretty well. I did pay $4 at a garage sale, which was way too high. I didn't know it at the time. I was just kind of experimenting to see what sold. But it did sell pretty well. It sold for $18.95 plus $3.75 shipping. So that's a total of $22.70. So that's pretty good. Not too bad at all. Now it's 4th of July, I can't send it out today, so I'll just have to wait till tomorrow. I know there will be at least one more sale today, and that is a lot of, um, I don't remember how many there was, now. it was like 30, 30, 20 something, 30 something old Transformers, little tiny cars, really, really small Transformers. Um, if you remember, I showed, I don't know, a couple of videos ago, I had this big box full of tr old 1980s Transformer toys. I got it for five bucks. I figured, hey, cool, you know, maybe I'll get 50, 60, 70 dollars out of it. Well, I looked into it, and they're worth a lot more than that. I don't know how much, but it could be a couple hundred dollars. It could be 150, 200, or I don't know. It could go way higher. But uh, anyway, uh, I last Wednesday I had pictures of them. I was like, I can't wait. I just want to put them up and do an auction and see what happens. So I did a seven-day auction on Wednesday night, 
not thinking that today, you know, a week from when I put them up, it would be 4th of July evening. That's probably the worst time ever to end it, but we'll see what happens. So I started them at $19.99 plus shipping, so they're paying for shipping, and right now they're up at like $46 or $48, and there's probably been about seven bids. So you can tell probably in the last couple hours some of these people might start, you know, uh, bid war against each other, and hopefully it goes pretty high. I was hoping it'd go like over $100, but it may not. Could be a terrible time to end. And that was just part of it. I still have a lot more transformers to go. So hopefully that box will turn out really, really well. So anyway, uh, I'll probably wait for a shipping label on this tomorrow when I send it out. And then uh, I got a few more pictures to take and then just enjoy the fourth today. So anyway, if anything else sells, I'll throw it in the video. All right, so now it is Thursday. I had a couple of sales on eBay. First one's right here. This is a book. I have it wrapped up so you won't really be able to see it. I'll have to show you a picture. But this is a 1964 Chevy Chevelle shop manual. So I have it in a poly bag that I'll double over and tape shut. Then I just sandwiched it in between cardboard and then I wrapped it in saran wrap. That's how I do some of these old books. Um, just to help protect them on the way from if if this was for some reason leak a little bit, you know, if it got rained on. And if it gets dropped, the cardboard is going to take the brunt and not necessarily the book. And uh, anyway, uh, I got it for $3. I actually found two identical ones at this old thrift shop that was mostly a bookstore. They had some other stuff. It was mostly junky, but the books were pretty decent. And uh, I kind of thought this thing would sell for about $35. So I had it listed there for a long time. Of course, it didn't happen. So I dropped the price, let it sit, dropped the price, let it sit. Finally had it down to $19.95 in free shipping and finally sold. So I paid $3 for it. I'm going to pay probably $3 or $4 in media mail to send it out. Also some fees. So when it's all said and done, I don't know, I'll probably make like $10 on it, so not super great, but it's all right. Okay, this next one here is really good. This is the Transformers I was just telling you about that ended last night. did a seven-day auction, just a handful of Transformers. I think there's 29 or something, something like that, around 25 to 30, somewhere around there. And uh, they're just little tiny Transformers. There's cars, semi-trucks, uh, jets, boats, a monster truck, there's a race car, there's a minivan. Um, just all a spaceship, just a tank, just all sorts of things like that. They're really small and they all transform into a robot. And if I remember right, only one of them uh, has like a broken arm. I just sold something. I'll show you that in a second. But um, anyway, pretty good condition. And uh, I got them as part of that box. I think I showed a couple of videos ago, a real big box full of transformers I got for five bucks at a garage. I didn't know it at the time, but I found a gold mine. I mean, they had great stuff in it. So I put these up for auction. I divided everything up. I have probably six or seven different items that I'm going to be listing on eBay. And, uh, well, actually, I have most of them up except for one. So I'm considering the top five, the ones that are like worth the most, to be a dollar each. So I'm considering this a dollar, put it for a seven day auction, ended on 4th of July night, probably the worst time ever I could do it. I wasn't thinking. And it still did pretty well. It had 13 bids seven bidders so there was a little bit of a bidding war going on and it ended at 73 dollars plus 670 shipping which i believe is a total of 79.70 and the buyer i think is in japan but i they're like running through some type of international shipper or seller or something because i am shipping them to oregon so they didn't go through ebay's global shipping program they went through something else and now, you know, I'm, I'm just going to ship them from there. And then from there, I guess they're paying more shipping to go to Japan. So they are probably paying, you know, a hundred and something dollars for these. Now, I kind of thought that's where they're going to end. I probably should have waited last Wednesday until the weekend to list them and then do a, a seven day sale and let them end this weekend. They probably would have done better. I just, my sales always pick up on the weekends. I imagine that's when bidding war would really happen. And no one is sitting there staring at the phone at old Transformers when people are shooting fireworks and stuff like that. So I don't know. I didn't think that went through, but still not bad. So anyway, I need to get some labels printed for those. But real quick, let me see what just sold. Hopefully it's something pretty good. I just sold, eh, what is that? Three inch miniature real glass. I don't even know what that is. Oh, oh, this is a good one. Okay, let me dig it out. I'll show you. This is pretty cool. All right, so I looked into it. I thought it said $3.95. I was like, what in the world sold for $3.95? But I totally read that wrong. It's $14.95. And it's this right here. I have it bubble wrapped. You're not going to be able to see it. So I'll have to show a picture. But this is a little tiny, I think it's like three and a half inches. It's a miniature glass Coke bottle. I think it has real Coke in it. It has the metal lid on there and then this little keychain on there. 
pretty cool. You can shake it around. It has, you know, the liquid and all that in there. And uh, this was in a little Ziploc bag I saw at a garage sale um, of other keychains. Most of them look kind of junky, but the one that really caught my attention was an old Super Soaker, the original Super Soaker 50 or whatever they called it, a little tiny yellow and green one. And uh, I just thought, well, that's pretty cool. A dollar, I'll just buy, buy this just to keep it. This is something kind of cool to have, you know, maybe hang right here or something. But I decided to look it up, and that little tiny uh, Super Soaker water gun keychain was worth about $12 to $15 on eBay. So I thought, whoa, okay, interesting. And then I was kind of thumbing through the bag, and I saw this Coke bottle, and I was, and I was like, well, that's kind of cool, too. I wonder if that has value. I looked into it, same thing, about $12 to $15. So I'm thinking just those two items is going to get me $25, maybe $30 on eBay, and I can spend a dollar. It's totally a good buy. So I decided to buy it. Then a few days later, another garage sale, I found another Super Soaker uh, keychain, and I combined those together and put the listing up, and it sold really quickly for I think $24.95 for both of them. That other and the other one I bought was also a quarter, so I have uh, um, 50 cents of both of those. They sold for $24.95 plus shipping. It was like 28 something in total. So then I had you know 75 cents left over of this bag. So I'm considering this Coke bottle 25 cents. And then the collection of other keychains, I'm considering 50 cents. And if those sell, I'll make, I don't know, $7 or something like that. Not very much, just get my money back. And then uh, this would be a pretty good sale. So when it's all said and done, that $1 bag of random keychains that everyone overlooked is worth like over 40 bucks. So that's pretty cool. So I need to go ahead and get that shipped off as well. Well, I rushed to the post office to go mail stuff and to get back because at 4 o'clock, so in about 5 minutes, someone's supposed to show up to buy a bike outside I'll show you here in a little bit. I got for five bucks and uh, it ended up not being worth fixing up so I'm just trying to sell it real cheap. But as soon as I got back I had another eBay sale which I don't know if I have time to go mail it today but it is a pair of women's Lariat boots or, or sorry Ariat boots. These are the work boots. If you remember these are the ones I picked up at a church rummage sale and they were filthy just covered in mud, dried mud on the bottom and uh, if I remember right I paid 50 cents for them. All right, and uh, anyway, I looked them up because mine were a little bit scuffed up and scratched up and they were so dirty, they were actually worn. I decided to sell them just a little underpriced compared to the rest. So I put them at $39.95 plus shipping and they sold. They're going all the way to California. So they're also paying $16.06 .06 in shipping. So that is a total of $56.01 and I paid 50 cents. So that is a really great flip, turning 50 cents into $40. So anyway, I'm not sure if I'll ship that out today or tomorrow, but now I need to go out and get my bike ready for the people to pick up. So let me show that to you next. All right, so here is the bike. It's a black and green Schwinn, kind of a department store grade Schwinn. Pretty rough condition, a little bit rusty, and the shock is a little worn out. But uh, anyway, I only paid five bucks at a garage sale, and now I see why. It has a little more work than I wanted to get into it. So instead of spending time to fix it, and maybe getting, you know, 30, 35, maybe $40 out of it. I just listed it for $20 to get rid of it. And if the person comes uh, comes by and, you know, they're not super crazy about it, I'll take less. Basically, just get rid of it and get my money back. So, anyway, this was not a very good buy. Okay, the guy came by last night and bought that bike. Like I said, I paid 5 I had it listed for 20 I figured someone would probably offer me 10 or $15 to just get rid of it because it needed way more work than I thought. He offered me the full 20 he says exactly what he was looking for. He was looking for something to kind of fix up that was cheap. Then he could let his wife ride it, see if she liked riding bikes with him. I think he was kind of into mountain biking. And if she liked it, then they would just sell it off and go buy her a good one. And uh, anyway, he looked it over and liked it, so he gave me 20 bucks for it. So I ended up making $15. That's not too bad. I didn't have to do anything to that. I think I aired up the tires. That was it. So uh, anyway, that's not too bad. So this morning, I decided to do some garage selling. So I got up early. Headed out for the 7 o'clock sales in town, got on my uh, garage sale treasure map app, and three sales showed up today. That was it. One of them's not until tomorrow. So uh, it's pretty slim pickings. I drove around. I hit up the two sales. The first one was no good. The second one, I ended up finding this jacket there. It's okay. Um, then I drove around, kind of did my route I do every week, where I hit up the major roads. There's always a sign at some of the intersections. I found a few more other sales, but nothing good at all. So I had spent probably an hour and a half, maybe two, probably close to two hours this morning driving around, not finding anything. I was like, okay, I gotta change my plan. If I wanna find anything today, I need to head somewhere else. I need to go where I've never gone before. 
So I got on, back on my app, I looked up, and there's a little town probably 30 miles northeast of here. And uh, every once in a while you see garage sales pop up. I've just never gone there for garage sales. But when I was looking through one of the, the pictures of the one that popped up today, it was mostly baby toys and baby clothes and stuff like that. But in the background, I saw what looked like a mid-century modern dresser. I thought, well, okay, interesting. I should go check that out. So by the time I got up there, they had opened that, that garage sale started at like 6.30 this morning. By the time I got there, it was like 10.30. So there was hours in between. I figured that thing was gone. I showed up, it was still there. It was rough, but decent. It, you know, it was real wood. It was rough looking. I think a lot of people got scared away from it, but I know there's people out there that like to fix them up. I even would want to fix it up, but I'm just going to flip it as is. So I got it cheap. I'm going to sell it cheap, but I was able to get it. So then I tried to drive around that town a little bit, but I don't know the roads at all. So I couldn't quite figure out where I was or where like the, you know, the major roads were there to kind of find signs. I found one more sale by accident. I checked it out. It wasn't anything that good. Just a couple things on our carport, some kids toys and clothes and stuff like that. Nothing I was really looking for. So I decided to leave there and then head about 30 or 35 miles northwest of there. So I was kind of making a triangle today, you know, 30 miles in between each stop and up to a college town where there's always a lot more sales, but they're not ever that great. So I went and checked them out. The first one I was, I was actually planning on going to first thing this morning because it said they had dressers, kitchen tables, things like that, you know, all kinds of household goods. Sounded like a good sale. I show up, nothing that good. It was all still there. It was overpriced. It's like, I don't know. They, it's like they were having a garage sale, but they were really trying to make money. They were trying to make serious money and nothing was selling. It was just way overpriced. Just like a, um, what did I find? It was a particle board uh, desk, but it was a decent, it, not just your standard Walmart looking particle board, but it was like, a, I don't know, it had some curves to it and things like that, but it was like rough condition. And they were trying to get $50 out of it. So I was like, eh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not buying anything here. It's just overpriced. I don't want to deal with this. So I just left. I went to the second sale I wanted to go to today. It was a dud. Then I went to the third one. By the time I got to the third one, they'd already closed. It was so hot today. People were closing at like 11, 30, 12 o'clock. So I was like, ah, okay, I got it. I guess that's it for today. You know, it's just nothing good at all. So I got back on my app. I noticed there's this little town, probably 15 or 20 miles north of that town. I've never been there in my entire life. I lived out here for like 10 years almost. I've never, ever been up there before. I've seen it. Every time I look at my map, I see it up there. And there happened to be a sale there today. So I decided to go check it out. And uh, when I clicked the little link to see what they had for sale, it looked pretty cool. So uh, I drive up there, and it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's this, how do I describe it? They had a big plot of land. It was acres and acres and acres, tons of grass they'd have to keep cut. And uh, that's a, they said they were moving. It was a moving sale. They were just selling everything, and they were going to travel. And uh, they were tired of cutting the grass and keeping up with the place. They just want to get rid of all that and just go see stuff. So anyway, imagine a big, I think it would have been a, like a metal building, but they did it up nice, like covered it in brick, had the mill roof, but two thirds of the building was a two car garage, but like a big mechanic garage, not like a car garage, like a big one, like the huge doors. You could probably park a semi truck in there without the trailer, but just the actual semi truck itself, it would fit in there. You could put two of them in there. Really big garage. And then one third of it on the right side of the house was, or of the building was the house. So pretty cool setup. That's something I'd like to have. You could kind of warehouse on one end, have a workshop or just be able to keep your cars in there or whatever, have this big work area and then the smaller house. But I would, I would not want to take care of that much land. But anyway, so they had it set up with checker floors and neon lights and bar stools and, you know, kind of hot rod shop looking stuff. And all the really cool items were gone already. They had already been sold. And I looked around and had a couple old PlayStation 2 games that, I, I don't know, some of them they're asking $5, some of them are $3, and they were only worth like 12 maybe 15 or so. I didn't, eh, I don't know. I decided not to do that and deal with that. So as I was leaving, I found some old tin roofing there. So I uh, picked that up. Really cheap. I'll show that to you in a minute. And then, oh, I forgot here in town, I bought at one of the sales, I did buy this jacket. And then another one, I bought a stereo. I'll show that to you in a minute. Here's the jacket I bought. This is the only thing I found today for eBay. This is a vintage Reebok windbreaker from probably the 80s or 90s. Really cool color blocking on it. Just says Reebok right there. This thing would be worth way more money if it had a huge spell out of Reebok down the sleeve or maybe a cross like this, like a huge Reebok. It would be worth way more money. 
but I gave the guy a quarter for this. I only paid 25 cents. And at an absolute bare minimum, this is like $25. But I'm going to hold out. I don't want to sell it now in the middle of summer. I'm going to hold out till right before the fall and list it and see if I can get $35, $40, maybe $45, maybe even almost $50. Maybe a $49.99 with free shipping or something. And see if I can get up in the 40s on this. I think that would be worth it. So that's pretty cool. So now when we take you outside, I'll show you the few things I picked up for local flips. All right, so here is the old galvanized roofing I found. So it's actually a lot more than I thought. I mean, compared to my foot, I mean, these are pretty big sheets. I only paid $4 for all of it together. That was a great deal. If you've ever tried to buy this before, you know it's expensive, the real deal. And uh, anyway, I wanna get rid of it quick, but make okay money off of it. So I don't know what will be too much. I think I might try to ask, I might start somewhere around maybe $45, 40 or 45 and see what happens. I figure it's probably really gonna be like 30 or 35, but I'll ask a little higher because I know it's hard to come by and it's hard to get cheap. I don't know if anyone would really pay 45 for it, but I don't know, they are pretty good sizes. So we'll, we'll see what happens. I'll probably get some offers on it. Okay, so now let me show you the other thing I found. It's this right here. Another one of these Panasonic stereos. This is the fourth Panasonic stereo I've bought. They've all sold. That RCA stereo I bought a little while back, no one has been asking about that, so I don't know what the deal is. It sounds great, it works, and uh, no one's asking about it. Anyway, this one, they were asking 20. I was able to test it out, and um, it works, except the cassette, well, I can't open it now, but the um, this one opens, but it's really dirty inside. I mean, you can see it's, it wasn't taken care of very well, and this one, I can't open at all, so that's gonna be Kind of a bummer because some people that buy these stereos get them because it's hard to find good you know a, a, a stereo that will play cassettes that sounds good so anyway I was, because that doesn't work i was able to talk them down a little bit i was trying to get it for 10 but i got it for 15. i have to clean off all these stickers and then just do a general cleaning i mean they look gross right now but that sounds great the cd player works the uh, am fm works but the tape player they didn't have one there and it's just so dirty i'm not sure it's gonna work so man I had one of these before where the tape player was missing and the other one didn't work and the uh, readout here was so faint you could barely see it. I paid three dollars for the whole thing and I sold it for like 30 or 35, I think 30. But then I've had others that were really clean that worked great and I've sold them for a hundred dollars, hundred and fifteen dollars. So this one paid 15 but because those don't work but everything else does and I can make it look nice, I'm a, I don't know, probably somewhere around absolute bare minimum fifty dollars but i think it'll probably be more around 60 70 75 maybe 80 probably somewhere in the 70s is what i'm thinking so it'll be a decent flip not amazing but pretty good but i definitely need to do some cleaning okay so now let me drag out this dresser and i'll show you what it looks like all right and here is the dresser i picked up so it has really good lines this definitely has the look that does well i got it pretty cheap i'll explain that to you in a minute but uh, just kind of go over it. So this is mid-century modern style, really clean and simple. Sometimes they have handles. This one just has a little groove cutouts on the bottom. But you can see the drawers slide really well. They do have some staining. The problem is that a couple of the drawers, see these are nice and smooth, but the bottom ones stick. And you can see they've stuck for a while because they're rubbing right here. Okay, so they're gonna need a little work. I think, yeah, this one does the same thing. It sticks a little bit too. But then the others, real nice and smooth, and then this one, it just sticks. And then this one does the same thing. You can see right there, it sticks as well. So it's not as bad as the others though. So the good thing is that it is all real wood, even the top. So as gross and scratched up and stained up as that is, you take a sander to that and it will look like new. Bring it back down to raw wood and you can stain it or clear it or oil it or whatever you want. So the entire thing is real wood, even the legs. So someone could bring this back and make it look really, really nice. So anyway, oh, by the way, it come with a mirror. They detached it, but I will put it back on top for the pictures and to sell it. A plain Jane mirror like this is kind of hard to sell by itself. But if you do put it with the original dresser, I think it'll bump up the price a little bit. You know, an extra maybe $10, 15 maybe. Anyway, uh, so this thing is really dirty, so I'm going to wipe it down. And then I will use Old English on it just to clean it up a little bit. It will not look perfect, but it will look better and more sellable. They were asking $35 on it. 
I asked if they could do better. They said, well, how much are you thinking? I decided to go ahead and just give them a first price. I told them $20. I thought they were gonna reject it and be like, no, we can't do that. But they, uh, they said, well, how about 23? So that's better than I thought. I figured it would go for like 25 or 30. So I got it for $23. And I want to sell it quick, so I'll probably put it up for 75, maybe 85, and see if maybe it will even disappear tonight. So let me clean it up. I'll show you what it looks like real quick. So now it's Saturday. I just got back from doing some garage selling, and someone is coming by to uh, pick up the dresser. I had it listed for $85, and uh, she never mentioned anything about going cheaper. I had several people giving me offers and asking if it's available, so I definitely can stay firm on my price. So anyway, that'd be $85 and I picked it up for, what was it, 25 no, $23. So this should be a pretty good sale. Well, the lady just came by and bought the dresser for $85. So I made $62 profit, so that was pretty good. Had it for less than a day. So anyway, when she left, I unloaded the uh, local finds I picked up today. So I will, I guess I'll start here. All right, so anyway found this dresser at one of the uh, first sales I went to today. I went back up 30 miles to where I ended yesterday. And uh, I saw this one in the Facebook posting, uh, or Facebook Marketplace posting they had. I saw it in the background in one of the pictures. And when I showed up, it was still there. They were asking $20, but when I looked it over, I mean, it has great shape. This thing will look really cool made over. But in person, it's pretty rough. So the whole top, it had to be refinished. I, it's either solid wood or it's a, a veneer on top underneath this old finish. You could sand all that off and actually redo it in wood. But then it has a lot of veneer issues, especially right here. That's that's going to be hard to fix. I think that's going to scare some people away. All right, another one there. Basically, all the corners are like that. Down here, the leg is like that. This is pretty rough. But if it was mine and I was going to redo it, I would just fill all those in with some Bondo, smooth it out, and then repaint it. I think it could look really cool. I imagine do it in resell white with resell gray details, do the wood or the top in wood, and then smooth these out and then paint them like a copper, go kind of trendy on it. I think it would look cool, but it takes a while. I just don't know if I have the time, so uh, I think I need to flip it cheap. Oh, also, by the way, they were asking 20 but I was able to get it for $10. So I think if I list it as is, I could probably ask about $40 or $45. But I think it's going to scare a lot of people away. Some people don't really want to mess with chipped veneer and things like that. And they're going to use that and try to get it for like $15 or $20. Bucks. So I might be uh, going through a lot of people until I find the right person that wants to buy it. Okay, also, I found this today. This is pretty cool. A Proform... See if you can see that pro form weight storage bench. So I just saw it sitting out. It was at this weird kind of rummage sale, this big giant tent that this guy has in his yard, and he just has a sale like basically every day. And uh, you can tell it's been sitting outside for a little while. The bolts are a little bit rusty. You can see these are kind of the stickers are dried out. But I thought it was interesting because when I opened it up, I was like, whoa, okay, that's pretty cool. So it's got some weights in there. They're not real heavy. You have uh, three pound, five pound, eight pound, and 10 pounds. All right, so a pair of each of those. So it'd be perfect for some lady out there that wants to start working out. It's pretty dirty, I have to clean it up. And the major issue is it has a split right there. And then, like I said, has the rusty bolts, which doesn't look too great. It also has wheels, so you can pick it up from one end and roll it around. So anyway, they were asking, he said that last week they were asking $100. And today they're asking 50. I offered 30 and uh, I got them down to 35 after a little back and forth. So at $35, I could probably, I need to clean it up, probably just try to take them stickers off, make it look as good as possible. And for $35, I could probably flip it for somewhere between 70 and 80 is what I'm thinking. All right, and then the last sale of the day, I found this, it's pretty cool. This is an old antique steamer trunk. The lady said her mom used it in 1927 to go on a train when she left for college. So this thing's pretty cool, it's huge. This is the biggest one I've found so far. It's 24 inches by 36, and it's, uh, I didn't measure height, let me check that real quick. It's, uh, there we go, 24, okay, there we go, 21. So it's 24 tall, 24 tall, 21 deep, and 36 long pretty dirty I thought it was black but she had this big sticker thing on there and it's actually kind of a navy blue 
with brass. I'm sure if someone really wanted to clean it up, it could look pretty awesome. But anyway, I got this. She, there was no price on there. And uh, she kind of gave it away when she said, well, the last, I had two smaller trunks and they both sold for 15. So 15 would be my max and I would go down from there because I don't want to take it back inside. So I didn't want to go like too hardcore cheap and go like, well, I'll take it for $2 or, you know, $5. So I offered her $10 and she took it immediately. So that was a great, great find for 10 bucks. I think I could probably ask a hundred or maybe, yeah, probably about a hundred locally. They, they aren't really selling for that, but I want to get as much wiggle room as I can so that it will probably end up selling for, I don't know, $70, $80, something like that. But I want to go high because there might be that one person that just has to have it. So I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, that was my local find. So now I'll take you inside and I'll show you a couple of things I picked up for eBay. Well, before I show you the items I picked up for eBay, I forgot there's another local sale I completely forgot to take video of. So I'll just show you a picture. But it is that antique wood armchair I got at a garage sale a few weeks ago. I paid $15, which ended up being way too much on it. Um, I just knew, I was just so confident it had the look that it was going to be a really good seller and go for like $45 or $50, something like that. I tried it. I had it listed there for a long time. It didn't happen. I finally dropped it down to, I think, $30. And then someone, or I might have dropped it down to $25 because that's what they ended up paying. They paid $25 bucks for it. So I only ended up making $10. So that is a $10 lesson to not be that confident in a design like that. Now, if I get an old project chair that's like mid-century modern, I think that would be worth it. But something like that is probably a really laser-focused uh, laser type of buyer and just doesn't appeal to the masses, but mid-century modern kind of does. So I, I don't know if I'll buy any more of those like that. Okay, things I found for eBay today. First one here is a calculator. And I saw it laying on the garage sale table. I thought, hey, cool, a Texas Instruments calculator. And then I saw it, it was like a TI-89 titanium. Ugh. I've looked at a TI-89 before, and it had almost no value. It was like a $15 calculator, maybe $20. And, or it might have been less than, I don't know, it's it probably around $15. So I thought, eh, I don't know. They were asking $5. But this is the titanium series, which I think is really just the silver coloring on here. I don't think it's... I don't think the programming is any different. So anyway, I look it up and it actually has good value. So some of them, even now in the middle of summer, were selling for like $50, $59. And then others were like $25, $30. So there's a pretty big range. I don't exactly know why, but uh, some of them were selling for good money. So around the time when school starts, it could go for really good money. Okay, so I look it over. I notice it has a little, probably hard to see, but it has a little, almost like a little scratch or chip on the screen there. So I thought, well, that kind of devalues it. And then the cover, is missing the four little rubber feet. So they're asking five. I thought, well, it'd still be a pretty good flip. I could probably get like, instead of 50 or 60, I could probably get 40 or you know 45 out of it. So it'd be a pretty good flip. So I buy it for $5, get out to the van, and I decided to put the cover on the correct way, like this, and I noticed it's like, oh, it doesn't even have the battery cover. That's gonna be like, that's a major selling point. That's just gonna kill off a lot of interest. So this thing's gonna be probably a terrible sale. So I picked it up for five bucks. I think it's probably going to end up going for like 20 25 I don't know if someone would pay 30 or 35 without a missing cover. I mean, it's a TI-89 Titanium. There's probably not a whole lot of them out there to just find the battery cover, so I don't know. This may end up being not so great of a deal. Okay, another item I picked up for a $1 garage sale. In pretty good condition. The only problem I see is the uh, insides here look like they kind of rubbed. But this is a pair of Skechers Shape Ups. Um, it's model number... 11809, so 11809. And I looked these up, they actually have some pretty good values, and they didn't have a whole lot of wear. They're pretty good condition, you can tell they weren't worn that much. But uh, I looked them up, and it seemed like the average price was about $29.95 plus shipping. And the shipping seemed to be about $10 to $12. So it's really about a 40 to 40, uh, eh, maybe 45, probably a 40 to $42 shoe. Uh, since mine have a little bit of wear and all that on there, if I do free shipping, I'd probably put them at like $37.95 or $39.95 or uh, just sell them outright, maybe a $27.95 or $29.95 plus shipping, somewhere around there. So it's not too bad. It's pretty close to my $30. Okay, next one I found I thought was like the deal of the day. This is a pair of Ray-Bans. All right, looks like sunglasses to me. And uh, it has a number in there. They're only $0.50 cents 
the plastic that goes, you know, the little side piece that's plastic, it seems like it's a little bit color faded from like the sun. And when I looked these up, well, for 50 cents, I just bought them. I mean, the Ray-Bans, the, every Ray-Ban I've ever had has sold for around $50 or more. So uh, I figured these would be a pretty good deal. And uh, so I just picked them up for 50 cents. You know, Ray-Ban made in Italy. Uh, model number RB3273012. And uh, anyway, I, when I got home, I looked them up and I saw that a pair had sold for $60 of free shipping. So I thought, oh man, home run, home run. Well, a while ago when I was coming up to do the video, I just happened to throw them on and I realized they're prescription. So I don't know if this particular model is all prescription or if it's kind of Ray-Bans like uh, reading, you know, it's kind of their version of a reading glass or something like that. I don't know. I have to look into it. But I've never had a pair that has been magnified like that before, so I don't know. I have to look into it. It could be a total deal killer, or I don't know. We'll just have to see. I did notice some of them that were listed had clear lenses, and I think some of them were just selling as frames. That should have been a clue. So I'm thinking these are designed as like, you know, for a prescription style glass. So I don't know. I have to look further into it. If I can't figure out what, uh, well, I don't even know what you call it, but you know, what type of glass is in there, it could be hard to sell. Maybe I just end up selling the, as, you know, with the frame or I don't know. But it should still be a pretty good turnaround no matter what. I figured, I thought they were just going to be sunglasses and since they seemed a little faded and there's a couple of scratches, I might be able to sell them for like 45 or 50 bucks. But now, I don't know. But I still think at least 25, 30, maybe more. Maybe I still get my 40, 45 dollars, something like that. So anyway, that's it. So kind of like yesterday, I didn't find a whole lot. But everything I got should be pretty decent, not too bad at all. At least I won't be like overwhelmed with work I have to do this week to get you know caught up in all this stuff. So anyway, that was the uh, finds of the weekend so far. Uh, I did not have any eBay sales yet, so whenever any more of those pop up, I'll make sure to drop them in the video. All right, so the weekend is now over, and I had some really nice eBay sales to kind of end off the week. So let me show you what sold. First one here is just all right. I was happy to finally sell it. it took a while. This is a shirt, Redhead brand company, which is not amazing or anything, but what was interesting is the print on the shirt and the size, and it was still new with tags. So it's a size 3XL, big shirt, seemed to do really well. You can sell them for more money. New with tags helps, and then also just the design itself. So it's kind of a Hawaiian leisure shirt, men's Hawaiian leisure type shirt, whatever you want to call it. It has American flags on there and muscle cars. So there's like Barracudas and Camaros and Mustangs, I think. Uh, and there's a T-Bird. So there's, there's several different types of cars on there. Pretty cool. I got it at Goodwill for $3.50 when I found it. New with tags and that design on there. I just knew that this was going to be an amazing seller. It was going to go for like $35 or $45. Well, I tried selling it there and it didn't happen. Dropped the price a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more. Finally, I just slashed the price and just to be done with it, I, like I've said a million times already, I'm just not interested in selling clothing anymore. So I was happy. It still sold pretty decently though. So it went for $15.95 plus shipping. And they also paid $5.15 shipping. So that's a total of $21.10. So it still went for like $21 on eBay, brand new. So it's not too bad. I was happy to uh, be done with that. Okay, the next two boxes are part of the Transformer box I picked up a while back for five bucks. So these were really good sales. Uh, this one was pretty good. This one was awesome. So let me show you the pretty good one, okay? So this is a random bag of GoBots. So it's not even Transformers. So inside this box I picked up, some guy that was, the lady said he was, was he my age or two years older than me? And these are toys from when he was a kid. Of course, he doesn't live there anymore, and she was just selling off stuff in their house. So this whole box for five bucks. I dug through it, and just all kinds of random Transformers. A couple other things, there's like a Terminator toy in there, a couple of trolls, very, like all the toys from when I was a kid. So for five bucks, I was like, hey, cool. That's, you know, that's probably worth $50 or $75 for all that stuff. I should pick it up. Well, little did I know, Transformers are worth a lot of money. People pay crazy money for Transformers, so I definitely will keep my eye out for them. I've never ever, this is the only time I've ever seen them out and about. But uh, anyway, the GoBots are not worth anywhere near Transformers, but they still have pretty good value, especially if you have a lot. So I know uh, you probably can't really see these in the bag. I might have to show a picture, but uh, there's about 
20 something, maybe around 25 of these, something like that. And uh, a couple of them I don't think are actually GoBots. By the way, Transformers are made by Hasbro. GoBots are made by Bandai, same company that did uh, Power Rangers. And uh, anyway, so GoBots just don't have near the value, but when you put it in a lot, it still is okay. When I looked up lots, I mean, I guess mine had a little bit more than the others. The others were like lots of, you know, 12 or 15. I don't think any of them were over 20. And they were going for like, you know, $25, $30, maybe $20, something like that. So I decided that I thought I was going high on mine. So I listed them at $38.95 plus shipping. Well, I put them up and within like two or three hours they sold. So I definitely had them too cheap, but I'm happy to uh, finally sell them off. So they also paid $8.47 shipping. So in total, they paid $47.42. And I am considering this free because that box had so many Transformers. I divided it up into, I think, seven lots or something like that. I only paid five bucks. So the best performing lots, I considered a dollar each. And I did not think GoBots would be that great. So I'm just considering them free. So that was a really, really nice sale of uh, parts of that box. Okay. This is the uh, best sale I'll get out of that box. I still have more to go though. Okay, so this right here is a box full of random Transformers. I believe they are all Gen 1 or G1. There might be a couple that are G2. Uh, G1s are like the 80s Transformers and then G2, they kind of get into the 90s, I think. I don't know much about them. This is straight, you know, everything I'm telling you is stuff I've learned from just trying to find them on eBay because I had no idea what I had. Like I said, I bought the box. I thought maybe it was worth 50 bucks. I was way off. They're worth way more than that. Okay, so check this out. There's four box or four bags of all kinds of random parts. This one I have no idea what it is except it's part of some Decepticon space shuttle or jet or something like that. And then there's also this front end that it seems like it fits the front of this, but it doesn't match. So I don't know. I have no idea what that's worth, so I just put it in the lot. Okay, this one here is kind of uh, it's a little bit random. There is this turtle in there. You can see it's teal and purple and pink. Um, so it's like this, you know, turtle that turns into a robot. Everything else is just kind of random parts. There's there's a dump truck there and like a crane, but then everything else is just like weapons and doors off of other robots and cars and stuff that I don't even have. Um, some of the parts are probably not even Transformers, I don't know. I just put them in the picture and I mentioned, I was like, hey, this is everything I had. I mean, this is all the random stuff I had in a box of Transformers. I don't know if they're all Transformers or not. Just carefully look at the pictures, you know, and see what you think. So anyway, that was that. Okay, this one here, there, I had a few more vehicles left over. These were bigger than the last lot that sold the mini ones. So this is a little bit bigger, a couple of, uh, a little bit bigger jets. There's a Jeep, some kind of sports car a little beetle and another jeep and uh they probably have decent value by themselves but i just threw them in a lot as well okay and then this one is kind of the figures that i had in the lot so these are like animals or the robot -y people looking uh, uh transformers so there's a two-headed dragon lion thing and a, i think that one's a wasp or something there's the robot guy here I mean, I have no idea what these are. Here's one that looks like a spider and, and one that's like a, um, a shark or something. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I mean, they look familiar. It brought back memories, you know, from when I was a kid. I, I don't think I had any Transformers, but my friends did. And I remember, you know, looking at them, playing with them and stuff like that. Okay, so all that together, I'm considering $1 because that's just one of the lots I had listed. Okay, so I put it up last week on a Sunday night uh, for $29.99 auction style for seven days plus shipping. So they were going to pay at least $30 or so. Well, within, you know, a few minutes, I got a bid and it was like, I don't know, $30 or something like 30, 50. Then it went up to $31. Finally, after a day or two, it was up to about maybe 45 ish, somewhere around there. And it kind of just stopped. So I was thinking, Oh, okay. I, I kind of thought these would go for, you know, a hundred dollars, 120, something like that. But maybe they're really just going to go for like $60. So then a couple days went by and then every once in a while, you know, cha-ching, my phone would go off and I'd see it raised, you know, $10 or whatever. So then it was up to 60 something dollars. Well, by Saturday, it was at about $81. So it's like, okay, that's not bad. I could live with that. Hopefully tomorrow that I'll get, you know, more people involved and they'll, they'll want to buy it tomorrow. 
So uh, anyway, Sunday comes around and my phone starts cha-chinging all day long. People are having a bidding war. So by the time it ended, it stopped at $165.50 plus $10.95 shipping. So in total, it went for $176.45. I have one dollar in these parts, so that's great. I will definitely keep my eye out for more Transformers. I mean, there's Transformer websites out there where you can identify what you have by color. That's how I figured out one of my lots. It's this little jet. I've never seen it before in my life. I went to their website. I clicked blue. <laughs> I mean, this is how basic it is. I clicked blue. Then the next option, I clicked, I think, plane or jet. And then they had a listing, and then I looked through them, and I found it, okay? And then I realized that that one was called Smokescreen. And, uh, you know, it's from 1994, and it's a G2, and I learned all this stuff. So then I was able to use that to list it on eBay. But when I was just looking through the box, I had no idea what, what I had except for uh, Optimus Prime. That's the only one I knew. So uh, anyway, that did really well. So $165, and I had no clue what I had. That was great, especially for that $5 fine. So anyway... That was the uh, flips and finds of this week. I kind of joined the week and the weekend together and just made one big long video. So anyway, if you like these, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment of what you think. And then if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do that. And then also click the little bell icon, which should hopefully, uh, or hopefully help you see the videos when they come out. So anyway, thanks for checking it out.